Well, hello, Shoreline Church and friends of Shoreline. This is our, our Wednesday devotional. And uh, we're going to think a little bit about, even though chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Proverbs uh, focus on how God's made us as men and women, there's a little interlude in chapter 6 about hard work, about being focused on your work and being diligent in what you do. And the example is these little ants. And so I want you to hear the story of the ant. And, and if you ever have seen ants on the ground, you, you never see ants like laying on their back with their feet up sunbathing. Uh, if they're laying on their back, they're probably dead. Uh, but ants are scurrying. They're always going somewhere. They're always building something. And they're just, you just think, man, they're always at work. And that's the picture that, that the book of Proverbs brings alive. So chapter six of Proverbs, beginning in verse six and reading through verse 11. Go to the ant, you sluggard. I love that word sluggard. We get, you know, slug from that. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores up its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. And then it shifts gears. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. Man, this is a challenge. Uh, the writer of Proverbs says, think about ants, how they work, and, and they just, they have this industrious, kind of unstoppable, somebody walks by their little ant hill and steps on it, they're like, okay, get back to work, and they're moving stuff, and they're getting, getting it, you know, they just, they keep on going. And it's a contrast to this person who, who sleeps their life away. They're called the slugger. They move and they live kind of like a slug. So here's a couple of thoughts from Proverbs. The big picture here in Proverbs 6 is, Work hard. There's something about industry, about intentionality, about giving yourself to what you're doing. And so here's a, here's a lesson. Uh, work hard at whatever you do. I believe that Christians should be the models of giving their best to whatever they do. When I, when I walk into a, a convenience store and I meet somebody there behind the counter who's attentive, who's working hard, who's focused, who's giving it their all. They don't, it's not like, oh, I don't like this job, I don't care, and they're just phoning it in. I, I will often just stop and say, you know what? I'll tell them, I, I get to train leaders around the world. If I was looking for somebody on my team, I'd hire you. I love your attitude, I love, I just celebrate people who work hard, and I get discouraged. I don't lecture them, but if I meet somebody who just doesn't work hard, it, it's tough. Because those who don't work hard are really basically saying, I'm gonna coast through life and let other people pick up the slack for me. And that does drive me crazy. <laughs> I, I don't like an entitlement culture that says, I'll do nothing, somebody else can work hard and take care of me. Let me be clear, when there's brokenness and hurt and, and somebody cannot take care of themselves, the Church of Jesus Christ, our families, and when necessary, social services can step in and help. But the first line of defense is always us working hard and doing our part. And if everyone does what they can do, it'll make the world so much of a better place. And when Christians live that way, it becomes a witness. So work hard. And then Proverbs gets into the slugger, the lazy person, who just kind of lays around and doesn't have much to do. And all I can say to you is biblically, the Bible does not uh, smile on and celebrate people who phone it in, people who are lazy, people who are sluggards and want everyone else to take care of them. Uh, there's one place in, in the New Testament where it talks about if a person won't work, they shouldn't eat. It's not saying if they, it doesn't say if they can't work, but if they can work and do their work and they choose not to because they don't want to, then everyone else should not come around them and provide for them. Why? Because it reinforces bad habits. It reinforces a bad lifestyle. Broken people who can't take care of themselves, yes. People perfectly capable who are lazy, it, it, it's, it's a damaging thing. That's when our helping hurts, when we help people that can help themselves. As a matter of fact, when, when children are very young, Smart parents won't do anything for their kids that they can do for themselves. Smart parents will let their kids rise up and do it. And when someone gets older in life, you want to give dignity to an older person, don't do for them what they can do for themselves. Let them have the dignity of taking care of themselves as long as they can. And so this psalm talks about the hardworking, industrious little ants, people who work hard, and those who are lazy. And then th there's natural consequences. If we don't live out God's values and God's plan, there's consequences. So the, so the proverb says this, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. It's not saying that anybody who's struggling is because they're lazy. That's not the point. You can work really, really hard and do all you can and still end up struggling. But what it's saying is if you are consistently lazy, you will probably find yourself struggling. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. 
And if you find yourself struggling, say, what's my part? God has given me strength and abilities and a mind to think and hands to work. What can I do to step in and really give my best? I want to learn that lesson of working hard and pressing forward. As I was thinking about this, I actually thought about my middle son, Josh. At 13 years old, my son Josh uh, came to Sherry and I and said, can you drive me to this church uh, on Friday and Saturday? And we said, well, why, why do you want to go to that church? He says, well, I'm doing a wedding. He, he started his video company at 13 or 14 years old. And he did his first we wedding, and out of that wedding, he got two more weddings. At the end of the year, he told me how much he made that year doing weddings as a 14-year-old kid. And I was like, man, a lot of adults would like to make that. He didn't make a lot of money, but that amount per hour for the weddings, he did, I was like, that's pretty good pay per hour for a young kid. Well, he turned 16 and he said, Dad, I want to get a job at Steak and Shake. It was some of his friends that were working at this burger place. And I said, I said, Josh, you're, you're running your video company. You make way more money doing video than working at Steak and Shake. And he said, yeah, but I want to try. I, just, I know my whole life I'm going to be working video. He went on to go to get a degree in video at school. And he's, he's, he runs a little, a little boutique company where he does weddings and elopements and other things. Uh, but he said, I want to work at Steak and Shake. I said, why? He says, well, because I'm never going to have a regular job. And I need to know what it feels like to, to work at a regular job. So for one summer, he flipped burgers and cooked fries. And he actually came to me after a couple days of this job. And he said, Dad, they already had me training the new people. Uh, and he said, I don't smoke, so I don't get a break every hour. He said, maybe I should take up smoking so I can get an hourly. No, he didn't say that, but he's like, man, he was just trying to put all the pieces together. And he said, man, Dad, there's so many lazy young people that don't want to work hard. And I said, well, I said, Josh, just you be, you be a model of being industrious and work hard. And I can't, that's a gift you can give your kids and your grandkids. If you have kids or grandkids, if you're at that point in life, encourage them to work hard. And if you're walking alongside of them, don't do for them what they can do for themselves. Let them grow up and be strong and work hard. There's a gift in that. There's something, even in creation, before sin entered human history, God said, tend the garden and keep it. In perfect paradise, people were working. Working is not a result of sin. The pain of our labor came after sin, but work is a gift from God. Be industrious for Jesus in all you do. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. We pray that we will look at the ants and see them work hard and scurry around. We would look at ourselves and make sure that we're not coasting. We're not becoming what the Bible calls a sluggard, moving like a slug, taking everything slowly and not doing our part. Let us be people who model diligence and passion and working hard at whatever we do. And Lord, as we do that, provide all we need that we can live for you, give towards you, and serve you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we'll see you Sunday in, Sunday, uh, Sunday in worship, and I would encourage you to go online and register for uh, services on campus or plan on joining us at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock for services online. God bless you and have a good rest of your week.